Hey guys, I have here a 1U Supermicro server that I picked up on eBay for fairly cheap. In this video, we're going to turn this into a dedicated Chia Gigahorse farming node. There are a lot of people building these out in 2U, 3U, you know, 4U form factors, uh, but I really like these smaller Supermicro servers, so I try to make use of them whenever I can. This particular case has space to fit all of the components I need, but there are a few catches. Now, I initially didn't intend to build out the Chia farm to the extent which it became, and because of that, I had piggybacked it on an existing server I already have, a KVM-based hypervisor. And that's been working very well. However, with the introduction of GPU-based farming, I'm really starting to run into some walls with that current, you know, design. I'm running a Tesla P4 GPU at the moment, which is passed through to a virtual machine that's running the Chia Gigahorse farming software. All 100 plus of my drives are mounted on the virtual machine host. They are then combined using merger FS and I have them shared to the virtual machine guest using a few NFS v4 mount points. I've really reached the limit of the Tesla P4 GPU in terms of farming capacity at around 1050 terabytes. I was starting to see more and more slow lookup times above the 20 second threshold. I was around four to five percent stale shares and it actually resulted in me turning one of my four JBOD disk shelves offline. I need to move to a more powerful GPU and I really need a dedicated SAS controller that I can pass through the host. However, once I get to that point, I'm really starting to question why I am virtualizing this instead of simply moving it to some dedicated hardware. So that's where we are today. So what we have here is an SC815TQ chassis. It's 1U as I already mentioned. You can see it's got four three and a half inch dry bays in the front. It did come with all of the caddies. Uh, it is designed to fit the W size Supermicro motherboards. We have uh, four fans there. It came with two power supplies. And one thing that made this case very appealing to me is that we have two uh, full size expansion slots on the left and we have one half size small form factor expansion slot on the right. Now this server did come with two power supplies. Uh, they are model number PWS504P-1R. This is a 500 watt power supply, 80 plus platinum rated. This server includes an X11 SSW-F motherboard and also an Intel E3 1230V5 CPU. That is four core, eight threads, 3.4 gigahertz base clock, 80 watt TDP. We also got 32 gigs of UDIM ECC 2133 megahertz memory. This memory is actually a bit unusual being that it's UDIM unregistered memory and ECC. Uh, so this is actually the first time I've used this type of memory. Um, and it does support up to 64 gigs. Now this uh, whole build here is actually incredibly energy efficient. So I already have Red Hat 9 installed, and if you power this up and leave it idle, it consumes just 25 watts. 25 watts for all this stuff that you see here, plus two solid state drives. So let's take a look at the expansion cards we'll be installing. First up is an NVIDIA RTX A4000 GPU. This is a beast of a graphics card. In addition to its beast-like performance, it's also very appealing because it's only a one-slot graphics card. And in terms of power, it's rated for 140 watt max. Now this card is more expensive, but I think it's a great buy considering some of the alternatives like the 3060, which is a two slot width, consumes more power and has a top facing uh, power port. Up next, we have a SAS controller. This is an LSI 9200-8E. The 8E means it has two external SAS ports for a total of eight external lanes. Now this is a PCIe Gen 2 card. The 9207 would have been a better fit. That is a Gen 3 card. However, this is the only one I have on hand. And then lastly, I have an Intel 550 dual port 10 gigabit ethernet card. It's gonna provide faster connectivity than the two onboard one gig ports. Now I mentioned there were some catches with this build. So this only has 16 PCIe Gen 3 lanes. We need 16 for the graphics card, we need eight for the SAS controller, and we need four for the ethernet controller. However, I do still believe this is going to work. So if we take a look at the block diagram for this motherboard, we have 16 PCIe lanes, and those are all going to the leftmost PCIe ports. We have the additional X8 port on the right side, and that contains four PCIe lanes that were added via the south bridge. So let's take a look at this PCIe riser card they have in here. So this is part number RSC-W-68, and you see on each end here we have what appears to be a PCIe X1 connector, and then we have this long bridge in the middle. On the other side here, we just have a simple X8 slot, which appears to be in an X16. So this is the side that will contain four lanes brought in from the south bridge. We're going to use this for the four lanes for our ethernet controller. On the other side, we have an X16 slot and an X8 slot. 
but there are only 16 lanes going to this board. There's a small jumper pin over here on the right hand side. When this jumper is connecting pins one and two, we will have eight lanes in the bottom, eight lanes in the top. If you were to connect this jumper on pins two and three, uh, we would simply have all 16 lanes going to this top slot. So the plan will be to run the A4000 off of just the eight lanes. And since we're only farming here and not plotting, I think that will be more than sufficient. If we were doing plotting on that card, you would definitely want all 16 lanes, uh, but that's going to allow the remaining lanes to be used for the SAS controller. Uh, so first I'll slide in the ethernet controller and I do not have a small form factor bracket, unfortunately. I definitely will be ordering one, um, but I don't want to wait a week for this build, so I'm just going to slide it in as is. Okay, on the opposing side, we'll place in the SAS controller first in the bottom slot. And then next we'll put in the big guy, the A4000 GPU in the top slot. Will it fit? That's a tight, well that's a tight space actually. Let's see. Should be able to wedge it in. There we go. Oh, yep, yep, okay. Now this 500 watt power supply should be more than sufficient to power this motherboard, uh, the CPU, the GPU, all the components we have here. However, that does bring us the second catch, which is this backplane doesn't have any PCIe power connectors. And why would it? This is a 1U chassis. Not many people are going to be installing GPUs in a 1U chassis. What we do have here are two additional four pin connectors designed to be used by a CPU. Um, and it actually says on the tag here, connect to motherboard only, but that's okay. We're going to use this for another purpose. Double floppy drive connectors. Nobody uses floppy drives and we have an extra four pin Molex connector here. That's fine too. So I picked up on Amazon this adapter cable here, uh, which will take the two four pin CPU connectors in one side and gives us two six or eight pin PCIe connectors out the back side. Now this is a lot of cable here and I don't want this all scrunched up within a one U case. I want as much space and as much airflow as possible. Um, so I'm actually going to snip off one of these cables since I don't need both. And that gives us what you see here. So now we can plug in the two CPU connectors. And here is the completed build. You can see the GPU is there. Uh, I have the power cable for the PCIe running nicely in front of the fans, nice and flat up along the side. So hopefully as to not restrict airflow from those fans, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Um, I did move the last fan here. I moved it over to the position here. There are two additional fan headers and I lifted these cables up a little bit towards the top of the case. My hope is that this fan will help blow air under the GPU which will then get sucked up by this squirrel cage fan and blown out. The now there isn't really too much of an air grill there in the front, but I'm thinking some will also come out the bottom here by the SAS controller. And there's plenty of ventilation on the side of the case. Nevertheless, we will certainly make sure this cart is not going to be overheating. And I'm actually thinking I will pick up two more fans to fill these empty positions. This is designed to hold up to six fans, but I don't want to take away any of the fans that are blowing over the CPU. I did get all of the extra cables tucked nicely back under the PDU cover over there. So I think we're ready to put the lid on and give it a go here and see if it starts up. All right, so what we are looking at here is the virtual server I was using prior to this new build. Um, you can see here it's farming 7,648 plots. These are K33 uh, C8 plots. And you can see it's doing fairly well overall. Here's a slow lookup time I was talking about. It said it should be below 20 seconds. Uh, here is one I wanted to show you. So you see there are two warnings here. It also found two proofs. Uh, 23 plots past the filter found two proofs and the lookup time was 25.78 seconds. So I'm not sure if the, the cutoff's around 28 or 30 seconds, I think. And uh, that's definitely what we want to, what we want to avoid because two, two partial proofs being considered stale. And if these were full proofs, if these were actual blocks that we found, um, you know, that'd be a big loss. And you can see here's quite a few, you know, and once I mount that fourth JBOD, the entire log is just absolutely flooded with uh, these slow lookup warnings. So, so if we do IP ADDR, I see we do have our 10 gig ethernet controller recognized. That is good. If we do an NV top, you can see it's recognizing our RTX A4000 and it is showing up as a PCIe Gen 3 at an 8X or eight lanes since we're only using eight of these 16 lanes. We're also going to do an LS PCI and we're going to grep on SAS here. We do have our SAS controller. It's an SAS 2008. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and power the server down, get it loaded to the rack, and then get our drives connected.
All right, so the server has started up successfully. You can see it's responding again, and I've gone back to the terminal. So the next step is we simply need to plug in our JBOD. And when I do that, I think it's fun to watch the uh, messages log. Just watch all the information that scrolls through. And it's just fun to watch all of the drives coming up like that. Um, so we'll let it sit here for a minute. All right, with all of the drives online. Uh, so the way I manage these drives is I have a mounting script I run. And this is just something I run manually here. You can see I have it broken up by disk shelf one, disk shelf two, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the mount script. I'm expecting two errors, I believe, because I do have two disks removed currently. See in the left window here, it's going through them. There's the two errors from the first JBUD. Sometimes it does file system checks depending on how clean the previous shutdown was. All right, so there are the drives. And go ahead and start the farmer. Now it may need to sync because it's been offline here for a few hours uh, since yesterday. It has been offline since yesterday. So yes, it will need to spend some time syncing. So I will change to the Chia user. Chia start farmer. And uh, we'll give it plenty of time to sync up and get started. Then we'll be back to check how it's doing. All right, so the blockchain sync completed and it began farming. So you can see what that looks like here on NVTOP. Taking a look at the farmer logs here, we are farming 9,728K33 C8 plots. And these lookup times are very, very low. They're all within two to five seconds, I'd say. Uh, even around this point here where we found a proof, we're still at 4.5 seconds. Uh, so you can see up here, there are some more proofs as well. And they're all, here's one at six seconds. That's really the highest I see. So there's absolutely nothing like we were seeing before. And here's one that's even 26 and 27 filter passes back to back and there's no slowdown at all. We're still below five seconds on both of those. Now, while this was syncing, I did notice my JBOD disc shelves were putting on a little bit of a light show. So I just filmed approximately 15 seconds of that because I thought it was pretty cool. I really don't know what it's doing, but the LEDs are all blinking from bottom to top in sequential order. So additionally, I did take a look at the power meter while we were farming and it is averaging around 250 watts while it's uh, doing lookups. It does drop quite a bit back down to idle wattage after. So looking at all of the wattage numbers, I would make a very rough estimate that we're probably seeing around maybe 40 to 50 watts overhead from having this in a dedicated machine as opposed to being in a virtualized environment. So I don't, I don't think that's too bad overall, and I do think there's going to be a huge benefit moving forward to having this on a dedicated machine. I can now more easily separate it out to a separate VLAN, and there's plenty of space going forward for future expansion if needed, in addition to whenever they decide to reduce the filter. That way there's plenty of capacity on the GPU as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. Hit that like button before you go. And if there's any hardware you'd like to purchase, I will leave links down in the video description. Using those links will help support this channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later.